it does kind of look that way, and it's kind of a funny looking wing with its end exposed here, but that's not the whole story. This is a double folding wing, the only one we've got like that in the marketplace that I'm aware of, and that's going to give you some unusual features. When the outer half folds back up like you see it here, it also folds up one more time, makes an eight foot wide package, which means it's legally trailerable down the road, but also of course gives you lots of room inside a hangar, so you can store more of them, pay a little less for it, all good things, and a lot of people are interested in folding wings. This has one of the most unique folding wings we've got in the entire LSA marketplace. Now what's this airplane called? This is called a Vampire. It's not a new airplane. It's been around a long time, but it sort of took a detour for a while, got involved with military applications, actually, and now has come back better and bigger than ever. In fact, big is an operative word here. Come on in, let's have a look at the airplane inside. I'm just going to plop myself down here, but we're going to go look again at that, too, because right now it looks a little narrow here. That's not going to be the case in the future. Your seat's coming up. You still got in there quite comfortably. But this no is problem. pretty easy to get in. But I can see it be a little tight in here, and they fixed that. We're going to go look at that in a minute. But once you're in here, look at this big wide cockpit, 50 inches wide. That's about... Uh, uh, more than a foot wider than a Cessna 172, one of our benchmark airplanes. And this has got a lot of room for even big guys in it. Also, a really nice interior finish to it. Lots of room in here, lots of panel space available. And you can see here, we've even got cup holders in this one. Uh, we've got analog gauges, but we've also got uh, GPS instrumentation in the center. And I'm sure you can load this up any way you choose. So, But a lot of pilots are going to like it just the way it looks. And this switching arrangement down here, looks very proper not just a bunch of little toggle switches these are toggle switches but all nicely labeled with graphics a very nice finish to this airplane control system wise what are they using the controls well here we've got something we have seen on a few models which is a center joystick that both occupants can use it does not have an extended stick on it but uh, it does it is easily readily usable by either occupant and down here on the floor which will be a little hard for you to see but it does have toe brakes on not one but both sides. How do they accomplish the ground handling on the deck? Well, ground handling on this airplane a little different than the common one. It uses differential braking, but it's a big part of it since it does not have a steerable nose wheel. Now, the uh, Cirrus airplanes that have sold so many aircraft around the country also operate exactly the same way. Nose wheel casters, differential braking is what steers you around. Uh, it takes about 10 seconds to get used to that is my guess, and then it'll pivot nicely. You'll probably turn this airplane around in a wingspan is my guess. Does the airplane come with the flaps there? Yes, it does have flaps. You can see back over here. Also, again, I point out an armrest. I'm big on armrests. But right in front of that, you've got a flap control lever right here. And right forward of that, in front of the joystick here, I'll pull the joystick back. Here's our trim control, electric trim. And, of course, your fuel controls right up here on the panel. And I like this feature, too, ignition switches that are guarded. So you don't inadvertently, in a bumpy air situation, turn the engine off on yourself. Speaking of the engine, what are we powering it with? This one uses the Jabiru 3300, that's a 120 horsepower engine from our friends down there at Jabiru in Australia. A very popular engine, common on a number of our airplanes out here. And a lot of GA pilots like it because it has an RPM range that they're more used to than the higher numbers from the Rotax engine. Performance do we get with that engine? Well, one of the notable performance things that you get out of 120 horsepower in an airplane like this is climb rate. This one's going to do a thousand feet a minute or better. Uh, but it'll also cruise along at very close to the 120 knot maximum and stalls at the minimum 45 knot number thanks to those nice Fowler flaps that are actuated right here. Fowler flaps are ones that allow a little bit of airflow through, means they operate at lower speeds and are highly efficient. I think it's actually the only one in the LSA marketplace of nearly a hundred models of which this will soon join that crowd. The Vampire has always been designed with the twin boom, twin vertical, and elevator and horizontal surface in the middle with the trim right smack in the middle. And all of this benefits from having the power flow right over the surfaces so you're going to get a lot of efficiency at even low speeds with a little bit of power running over those. Uh, this is a whole new pod. This is actually a production pod now, but the difference here we noted when I got into the other uh, flying model that they've got here, it was easy to get in, but it would have been a little tighter to bring your legs in behind you. Some of us that are a little less flexible will enjoy this arrangement, which I'm going to demonstrate. 
Very, and this is, by the way, also at the right height. This is not a just a mock-up for uh, sitting in, but it's at the actual height of the finished version. So talk about being easy. Even even people that are a little less flexible, sit down, bring your leg in. I didn't even have to use any help for that. So here we've got again that big wide cabinet. Of course, this is a mock-up without all the glass still in it. But imagining the other one, and now imagining this easier entry and the low seating to it. This is going to be beautiful. And I can tell right here, gobs of visibility out of this airplane. So if somebody want to get more information, is there a website they can get it on? The company does have a website. It's called VampireLSA.com. Vampire is V-A-M-P-I-R-E, followed by LSA.com. And do you have a flight report on this one, Dan? I do not yet, but I'm looking forward to a flight report. And when I have it, it'll be available on ByDanJohnson.com or BYDanJohnson.com.